Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. So you're probably wondering if you watched my last video in this series on Plex and the HD Home Run, uh, you're probably wondering how do you configure Plex to work with the HD Home Run. So I figured I would do a separate video for the, not for the faint of heart who uh, want to try to get this to work. It's not impossible, uh, but it's not as simple as just dragging a plugin into the Plex folder. So I'm going to do my best to describe to you how I got it to work on mine. And hopefully this will work for you because I found a few things that weren't kind of spelled out in the documentation that helped me up for a little bit. Uh, but once I found some workarounds, um, they worked just fine. Now, let me first say all of the um, applications I'm going to talk about now that you need for this to work. Uh, are in the product in the video description below. So you just go down there. Uh, you'll have links to everything you need to at least download everything and get it working. The first step is to download the plugin itself, and uh, it's available on uh, the H on the Plex forums. And uh, the guy here that's writing this is called Two One Six. The link to this is down in the in the description. Uh, you can grab the latest version right now. It's on Alpha Point Four A. Uh, another reason why I'm going to show you my configuration and not get into too much of the nitty gritty on how to set it all up is because this has been in rapid development. This guy has been cranking out a couple different versions and all in very quick succession. So it's very possible that by the time you watch this, it might be totally different than what it is now. But I think a few things are going to stay the same. The first is you need Plex 2.7 point something. And uh, he wrote it on 2.7.5 on Fedora, which is a Linux platform. Uh, I got it to work on Windows Python 2.7.6. Now, if you don't have Python, you're going to need to download it. And the link to that, of course, is in the description. Uh, one thing that I had trouble with was that the first thing I did was go for the latest release, which is the wrong thing to do. So 2.7.6 is what I am running, and that is working. The second mistake I made was, oh, well, I have a 64-bit machine. I should download the 64-bit MSI installer. That was my second error because uh, this thing depends on a Python uh, library for VLC, which is the Video LAN video player, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and for whatever reason, it doesn't like Python in 64-bit. It only likes it in 32-bit. So this one is the one you want, Windows x86 MSI installer. Grab that, uh, install Python. And when you install it, I suggest putting it into a directory that's easy to remember because the next thing you need to do uh, is go down to your Explorer, to your control panel, and go into your system and security, your system folder, go to advanced system settings, uh, go over to the uh, environment variables. And I know this is the part where it kind of might, might scare some people, but I think you can handle it. Uh, you want to set your path to include that directory. So I put my Python directory in C Python 27 32, uh, just in case I wanted that 64 bit thing for later. Uh, and you just want to put that in there because that way, when you're on the command line and you want to run this server program that you're downloading to make all this work, you don't have to do a lot of fancy navigation. You can just type in Python, the application name, and you're off and running. So I will show you how that gets started in a second. So that is point one. Point two is to go and grab VLC, which is that great video player. This is part of the, the secret sauce that makes all of this work. And be sure when you download it that you go to videoland.org, this, and you don't click on this ad up here because if you know, this is free software, if someone's paying to put an ad up to download this free software, there's probably something bad in it for you. So videoland.org is what you want to do. Go there, download this, and get it all installed and working. So I did that already. That's already done. In fact, this is already all done because I have this thing running. So I want to show you what's in the plugin folder next. So we're going to go to my downloads folder and we'll just pop open uh, the HD server folder. And what you have in there is a very important file called readme. And I suggest you open this file up and follow it because I didn't do that. I was, you know, usually my usual approach to things, I can just make this work on my own. Guess what? It doesn't work that easily. So um, download this, kind of go through its, its instructions. Um, this part you don't even need to do because they include the Python VLC module inside of here. You can see it right there. So you don't even need to worry about all this stuff. I was trying to do this for so long and it turns out it was already in here. Um, so that wasn't a big deal at all. Um, you do have to do one thing, which is, um, the HD Home Run, when you install it, there's a program called uh, HD Config, I think it's called. Where did I see that on the uh, thing here? Um, yeah, there's a, uh, a little command line application called HD Home Config. Here it is. Uh, and you need to find that exe file and put it in the same directory as the HD Surfer Wave folder. And it needs, to, it needs that because when it does its channel configuration, it needs to have that there. So 
Once you get that file downloaded into the HD Surfer WAV folder, what I suggest you do is put it like on your C drive so it's easily accessible from the command line. So I have already put mine as the C HD Surfer. And I'm going to show you some files in here because some of this stuff gets uh, made when you first boot the application up. So I'm going to close out the README because you should be reading that on your own. And what happens is, so here we are in my HD Surfer folder. Um, what you do is you just type in uh, Python. Actually, I have it already saved here. So Python HD Surfer Wave.py and start. Now, what's going to happen on mine, because I already have everything installed and configured, uh, is that it just starts up and starts running. If it doesn't have any configuration files in its directory, which are some of these things that you see here, uh, it will take you on a guided configuration tour. And it's awesome because you don't have to think about it. It finds the HD home run automatically on your network. Uh, it asks you what tuner you want to use. And this is a really important point I'm going to make here, so listen up. There are three tuners on the HD Home Run Prime. Right now, this particular plugin doesn't support the tuner locking feature that Windows Media Center and others use. So if a tuner is in use, it's not going to work. It's just going to crash on you or just say it's locked, you can't use it, and it's going to tell you, what, you know, who's using it. Um, so what you want to do is look at your HD Home Run, those three lights in the front of it, uh, if, if one of the lights are on, that tuner is in use and you need to use one of the other ones. So uh, what I did initially was set it to tuner number two, which is actually the third one on the chain. So if you're using Windows Media Center or something else, uh, the HD Home Run basically fills up the first two tuners with requests before it gets to the third one. Uh, so set it to tuner number two, which is actually the third one on the list. The first tuner is tuner zero. So just keep that. Uh, that part in mind. Uh, you can change the tuner that it uses anytime you want. So you have um, some, some ability to do that uh, later. So, um, so once all that's up and running, your plugin or your Python script is working. And what'll happen is you'll see uh, down here that it'll tell you HD Surfer Wave release is, is started. And basically, it's just sitting there. You need to leave this command window open at all times for it to work. Uh, the next step is you have to go and copy that bundle folder. That's the second part of our uh, thing here. Uh, you need to copy that bundle folder over to the, uh, pr uh, the Plex plugin folder. And what's nice is if you go to the, uh, the taskbar down here, as you can see, uh, and you right click on the Plex icon, you can go to Open Plugins folder. It'll take you right there. So it's really convenient. Uh, what you do is you just drag that bundle into that folder. You, turn, you quit the Plex server and restart it. And when you do that, um, it should find this just fine. What I do suggest you do, and this is actually an important thing also, is you have to go into this default prefs folder. And you have to edit that folder or that file and point it at the IP address of whatever is running that Python program. Now, I run it both on the same machine. I have it uh, set to the local IP. You could set it to localhost if you wanted to. And that would find it and get everything uh, functional. So you need to set that configuration file before you restart the Plex server. But um, that's it. So once you get that going, uh, you point it over there, and you're good to go. Now, what happens if maybe you want to change the tuner? So to change the tuner, what you got to do is stop the application first. A lot of times, I just hit Control C, and that will dump you back out to uh, the command prompt there. And you go over to your uh, HD Surfer folder here. And what you do is you go over to your server INI files, a little configuration setting folder here. And you just go and edit that. So let me just click on that. I'll go and edit. And as you can see, it has a um, HDR device section here. And all you do is change the tuner ID to the one you want to use. So if I wanted to use that last tuner, I could just hit 2. Or I can put it back to 1, and you're off and running. So it's not too hard to change tuners on there. Um, if you want to change channels, and one of the things to keep in mind is that it takes a long time when you first get this set up for it to do its channel scan. What it's going to do is that config utility is going to run in the background. It is going to go take an inventory of every single channel you have available to you through your cable system. On the HD Home Run Prime, I use a cable card. So I'm, you know, I'm getting everything I'm paying for. Things I don't pay for, I don't get. So I'm not stealing cable here or anything like that. Um, when it, uh, what it'll do is once it does that scan, it will then uh, ask you about every single channel. So it takes a while to say, yes, I want that one. No, I don't want that one. And I do suggest you know, maybe limiting it a little bit. Otherwise, you're going to have a huge list of uh, channels to look at. If for some reason you want to change the available channels at some point, uh, you can go into this channels.xml file. And you can go right click on that. I have Notepad++ here. And you can see it's kind of a mess. But um, basically, it's uh, XML files detailing every channel that I have. So um, here's a, a start of one. So channel 1003 on my local cable uh, system, uh, the frequency that that channel is on. Uh, you can set an icon to it. So there, it comes with a few icons in the bundle. You can uh, you know, have like a CBS icon or whatever. 
um, the, uh, the format CAM256. I named this WFSB because the name it does by default is just way too long, so I just set it to that. Um, and it's kind of complicated to go in and add these manually, but you can do it. If you just delete this channel's XML file, it will start the process of getting all your channels put in again. So it'll automatically do that channel scan and you can reconfigure everything. So you do have some options. You can manually kind of get in there and muck around with it, or you can just uh, delete that file and have it go through the channel scan once, you know, from, from the start. And I had done this initially and I added like every channel, just hit yes all the way through. And then I couldn't find anything because it was just such a long list and it didn't get all the names right. So uh, what I ended up doing was just, just picking like the eight or 10 channels that I usually watch from time to time and just left them in there. So. Uh, so that is the configuration. I, I would love to try to help everyone because I know you're going to have problems with this because I certainly did. Um, I'll do my best, but I only did it with Windows. I didn't try it on the Mac or on, on Linux, so I won't be able to help you with that. But maybe we can get a discussion going in the message board. I also found that that message board post where I found this plugin, they were really helpful with each other and trying to figure out stuff. The author was very involved in uh, giving some people advice. So you might want to check that out as well. But um, you saw it working. It works great. Uh, once it's all configured and installed, what will happen is you'll have uh, on every device that you have accessible with Plex, um, you will see this HD Surfer icon pop up and you just click on that. Sometimes your uh, app will crash, just so you know. Um, and it just gave me an error because I wasn't running the, uh, the Python script. So I'm going to start that up again. So we'll go back again and I think we're good. So there we go. Uh, and I can just go ahead and pick uh, one of my networks and hopefully start watching. I may have just broken it. Um, one of the things when you're running alpha stage software is that you need to be adventurous because it's going to take a while uh, as, uh, as you, everyone works through the kinks. But there you go. I mean, it is uh, working really seamlessly. And that's live television, HD, uh, streamed from this device to my machine. So um, one last thing to keep in mind is that when you're done watching TV, and I mentioned this in the other video, uh, you need to go down to the bottom and stop the live TV. And you'll see that on all of your devices. And the reason is, is that um, it doesn't know to stop the, um, the transfer of video from the, uh, the, the computer to the Plex server. So it, it, it's not going to put it over the internet if you, turn, if you stop the internet stream. But what it's going to do is it will continually uh, keep transcoding that video because it doesn't know that you stopped it until you tell the software that you stopped it. So it'll lock up one of those tuners uh, until you hit that stop button. So even if you stop watching television, uh, the plugin doesn't know that you stopped. It's just running con con you know, concurrently in the background. Uh, so you need to send the stop command, which will show up as one of the channels on your list. And once you hit that, that tuner will then become available again. And like I said, it doesn't um, support the locking feature. So it's possible that while you're watching something, if one of the Windows Media Center uh, machines in your house decides to pick up that tuner, uh, it will change the channel on you automatically and you won't be able to really change it back after that. So a couple little issues here or there, but uh, by and large, it is working great. And I'm really, really happy with how it worked. And I really appreciate everyone pointing me in the direction of Plex because I wouldn't even have known to look at it. So, uh, so that is where we're at with this. If they make some significant changes, I will definitely do a follow-up video, but that is how I got it to work. Good luck. <laughs> Hopefully it'll work for you. I'll try my best to help you, but again, I, I, I got it working in this configuration on Windows. Hopefully it'll do uh, perform the same for you. This is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching.